you know this from 2070, a nerve or muscle cell is polarized. It's polarized. Positive on the outside, negative on the inside. So, but here we have a polarized, could be a nerve cell, could be a muscle cell. Let's say it's a muscle cell. Let's say it's a heart muscle cell. Then, if you stimulate it, what you do, you can stimulate it there or anywhere, but let's stimulate it at the end. What you do is you change, you change the permeability of that membrane. And certain ions flow one way and certain ions flow another way. And what happens is that area becomes negative on the outside and positive on the inside. Now the same thing would be happening on the other side of it. Okay. So, so now you have an area that is negative sitting beside an area that is positive on both sides of that membrane. When you put a negative area close to the positive area, there's nothing in between them. What are you going to get? Well, if that is a flashlight battery, when you push the button on the flashlight, what are you actually doing? What you're actually doing is, well, there's a ball up here somewhere. And there's a circuit that runs like this. And that circuit is, is closed, but is open like this. And when you push that button on the battery, what you are doing is closing that circuit. And when you do that, current flows, and what happens to the ball? It lights up. So, if you have these little areas sitting beside each other, you will get current flowing from one to the other, like so. Well, if current flows from here to here, then this area becomes negative and this area becomes positive. This goes back to where it was first. And now what's going to happen? Now you're going to get current flowing from there to there and this whole thing is going to repeat itself as it goes down here. So, eventually, you have this disturbance moving along this thing. This is not electricity. How fast does electricity move? Everybody got a wild guess? Slower than light. What? <laughs> speed of light. Electricity moves at the speed of light, 186,000 miles a second. This is not moving at 186,000 miles a second. This disturbance is not, it's depending on the particular cell, it might get up to 300 miles an hour. And still, compared to 186,000 miles an hour. So what is moving here is this disturbance in the polarity. And what do we call that moving disturbance in the polarity? An impulse, a nerve impulse, or an impulse going across a muscle is a moving disturbance in the polarity of that cell. Right? It's not electricity, it's not moving at the speed of electricity. We can measure it though, how fast it's moving and so forth, and we can interrupt it and so forth. Now, to begin an impulse, for an impulse to begin in that cell, what must be the condition of the cell membrane? If we go back here, what was the condition of this cell membrane? It was permeable. It was? Permeable. No, it's permeable, but it's got to be something that's polarized. Right? Now, if it's not permeable, we're not going to get any impulse. Those, those ions cannot move. But it's got to be polarized. I can't disturb a polarity if there isn't any polarity to begin with. So it's got to be polarized. And once I, if I disturb it enough and I create that difference in polarity then, the opposite of what it was, now I have the potential for an impulse to go from 
one place to the next place to the next place to the next place, etc. So when it's finished, what should it look like? It should look like what it did was first. Now, what's going to happen when it gets to the end? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. So, it's got to be polarized. What we're going to do is that we start the impulse, we're going to, the books say depolarize. So that's kind of a misnomer. It's going to depolarize and then it's going to repolarize in the opposite. It was plus minus, we're going to make it minus plus. That's repolarization, but books normally call it depolarization. If it was depolarized, what would it be? It would be what? Well, it would be something, yeah. As far as those charges, what would be the charges on either side? If it's depolarized. The same. They would be what? The same. They would be the same. There would be no polarity. Polarity means what? A difference in charge from one side to the other. So, yes, it does become depolarized, and then it repolarizes in the opposite. So, and then, eventually, it's going to repolarize and go back where it was first. So, as that impulse moves, it starts out, it's got to be a, it's got to be a polarized membrane, it switches around, and then it switches back where it was first. What is causing that? the movement of ions from one place to the other. But I'm not going to get those movement, that movement unless I depolarize a section of it first. Suppose I was to depolarize it here. What would happen? Would I get movement of an impulse? Yes. Except what? What would be the difference? What? What direction would it be going? That's right. What? What? But I can't hear you for this thing right. Both directions. It would be going both directions, exactly. Because if I made this minus and this plus, then there's a tendency for movement this way and that way. But so why do we start at the end? Make it easier to show, easier to understand. And that normally is where it begins, at the end of the cell. Okay. If I don't have any polarity, then that impulse is stops. What? Suppose that for some reason there was no impulse, I mean there was no polarity along that area. And I start an impulse, and what's it going to do? It's going to stop when it gets to that place. Because there's no polarity to change to go to the next place. Okay, but we're not going to worry about that. We're not going to have that here. Okay. So, what kind of cells, normally, if we're talking about nerve cells, then here's an impulse moving along a nerve cell. We know what an impulse is. And it doesn't go from one nerve cell to the next nerve cell. It creates what? Releases something from that end of that nerve cell. Neurotransmitters. And what? What? Neurotransmitters? A neurotransmitter. Exactly. And that neurotransmitter does what to the next cell? Create an action potential. She said it creates an action potential. An action potential is simply the moving impulse. Or it does what to that cell? Stimulate. It either creates an action potential in that cell or prevents an action potential in that cell. It's only two things. It either lowers the, it lowers the membrane of, of potential or it raises it. So let's assume it creates an impulse in the next cell. But it might, do, it might do something to this cell to make an impulse more difficult. It, it raises the polarity. Okay, so what can this second cell be? Well, it can be a nerve cell or a muscle cell. Now, that normally is what's going on, but there are situations, and these are not that normal, there are situations like this, where this impulse is coming along here, and this distance between
between these two cells, they are so close that, the, that I don't create a neurotransmitter. The impulse simply goes from one cell directly to the next cell, and it acts as if it's one cell. That's not the rule. That's not the rule between nerve cells. But there are nerve cells in various places, nerve tissue, where the impulse just goes from one cell directly to the next cell, no neurotransmitter. When you have, if this is a muscle cell, a cardiac muscle cell, cardiac muscle, then this is what's going to happen. It's going to go, it's going to go from one cell directly to the next cell, to the next cell, to the next cell, to the next cell. The next cell. So even if I had a bunch of them here, it's going to do this. Why? Because these cells are so close together and their membranes are overlapping, like my fingers are overlapping. I'll show this in a minute. So if I stimulate this, all of these are going to react, contract simultaneously. It's like it's one big cell. Okay. Now, right with us. You guys that just came in, I have a sheet up here for you. cells are arranged like this. I'm sure you remember this from 27. These are skeletal muscle cells. Right? Very distinct. How about smooth muscle cells? Well, smooth muscle cells look like this, and they tend to they tend to overlap to some extent. Okay? But cardiac muscle cells look like a web. Okay? Now, so where are the cells? Here's one, here's two, here's three, four, five, let's see, six. So, here is number two. This whole thing here, that's number two. This whole thing is number three. And you see, they're not, they're not lined up like this. If I stimulate this skeletal muscle cell, then the impulse goes in that cell. The only way I can have both of them contracting is to literally stimulate them all at one time. Up here, if I stimulate this thing, I'm going to stimulate that cardiac cell. The impulse is going to go from here to here to here to here to here, etc. It's going to go to all of them. Why? Because they are so close together. This thing here is called an intercalated disc. People thought for years that it was actually something in between the cells. You can tell they got very powerful microscopes and saw that in between cardiac muscle cells is not a disc, but it's like this. Cell membranes overlap. So here would be here would be one, here would be two, and so forth. So when we're looking at this ordinary microscope, it looks like a dark band. But when we enlarge it, we see that it's actually the membranes overlapping. Because they are overlapping and they are so close to each other. And here I have an impulse going along here. That impulse is just going to go right to the next cell. 
no neurotransmitter, et cetera, in between. 